So what's going on guys, DIY Dan, Saltwater Junkie here again. This video is basically gonna entail a performance review of the compact dual algae screen algae scrubbers that I recently made and put on my multiple systems all running off one sump filtration. I'm gonna go over the things I like about them, how well they're performing compared to previous algae scrubbers that I have built, and what I don't like about them. So let's get to it. So here's a quick look at all the different algae scrubbers that I have built over the years, starting probably seven years ago. And all of these videos, if you wanna check those out, will all be on my channel under the playlist of Saltwater Junkie. Now all of these algae scrubbers, except for the first one I ever built, where I actually built it underwater, have actually performed really well, but I can honestly say that these last two compact dual screen algae scrubbers have outperformed any of the ones that I had previously built. Now that being said, even though they outperform every other algae scrubber I've built, there is a couple problems with them, which I am gonna go over. One of the biggest issues I have is green hair algae growth in my actual display tanks. Now when I first started getting into algae scrubbers, I heard that when you get the algae scrubbers going, it gives that algae a place to thrive and therefore helps remove it out of the display tanks. In all the algae scrubbers ever since I started using them, I've actually fought green hair algae more in the display tanks than before I started using them. Now maybe that's specific to my situation, I really couldn't tell you, but it is a problem that I continuously have with my display tanks. Now I do run very powerful lights on my tanks because I wanted to be able to start adding corals if I wanted to and I didn't want to have to buy another light to replace a light that wouldn't handle the corals. So that is, I'm sure, part of the problem with my green hair algae in the display tanks. What I can tell you is that the green hair algae in the display tank is not specific to the algae scrubbers that I built. My 36 gallon bow front is running a clear water scrubber that is bought from the manufacturer and I have the same green hair algae problem in the display as I do with my other systems. Now one of the main reasons I thought I was getting that green hair algae in my main displays is because it was possibly falling off of the algae scrubbers and then making it way down into my sump, which in turn would go up through the return pumps. And because of this, for the past couple of years, I've always returned my main drains from my algae scrubbers down through a filter sock to counteract that, but it really hasn't made a difference as far as the algae growing in my display tanks. Now, is this a pain in the ass problem to have? Absolutely. However, the benefit of using the algae scrubbers with the nutrient removal that they give me and not having to do constant water changes to try and remove nitrates from my systems is well worth the hassle of dealing with that green hair algae. One of the ways I try and combat this green hair algae is getting the fish that will actually eat it. So in my left 75 gallon display, I have a fox face and a sail fin, and they absolutely destroy the green hair algae, and they absolutely love it. However, in the 75 gallon on the right hand side of my main displays, I have a snowflake eel and a Niger trigger, and both of these guys are absolute assholes, so they are the only thing I can put in that tank. So the green hair algae grows exponentially in that tank because I have nothing to combat it. So what I end up doing for the most part is just switching the decorations and moving those around side to side in those tanks. That way my sail fin and fox face can munch away at that, clean it up, and then I switch it back over to the other tank. Now I have tried putting a couple other types of starfish and urchins in there just in hopes that they would possibly eat some of that green hair algae away, and nothing has really worked as far as that goes. Now the center aquarium of this system is a 210 gallon. And I do have a fox face and a bristle tooth tang in that. However, they are not nearly as aggressive with eating that algae as the sail fin tang and my fox face in the left 75. Now there are two main issues that I do have with my algae scrubbers that I built. The first one is you'll notice when I'm cleaning this screen off that I do have a void in the algae in the center of the screen. This happens on both of the algae scrubbers that I built, and it also happens on all four sides of the screens that are in those algae scrubbers. Now, this could be the way I have the groove cut in the PVC to flow the water. I might have needed to go a little thinner on the outside and thicker in the center, so maybe the center of that got a little bit more water flow than the outsides, but it is a problem that I have. Not that it really matters that much because I still get plenty of algae growth and I'm not really that concerned with it. Now after the cleaning, I do have full water flow going across the entire screen. However, within a few days after cleaning them, 
The algae starts building up right at the top of the screen in the center and then diverts that water away from the main center of the screen, giving me that void of growth in the center of all the screens. The second issue that I do have with my algae scrubbers is the fact that I do get an abundance of algae growth in the bottom of the actual algae scrubber reservoir itself, which can cause my main drain to get clogged in some cases and is why I put a secondary overflow in each one of those reservoirs. Now this is a problem I fight with all of my algae scrubbers as well. It's not specific to these compact ones that I just built. But in all honesty, I really didn't think I would have this problem with these algae scrubbers because I did put one inch drains coming out the bottom and I thought that would flow enough water where this just wouldn't be an issue. Now the average time I have to go between cleaning these screens is about two to three weeks because of the amount of algae they produce. If I wait any longer than that, the algae does start to clog my main drain and start bypassing it into my overflow. The third issue that I had with these algae scrubbers that I built was I was getting algae buildup pushing up against the actual clear part of my algae scrubber reservoir, which just made it more obnoxious to clean. Now after this happened to me, like the first two or three times that I cleaned these screens, I did feel I needed to rectify this problem because it was just obnoxious. So you'll notice the way I built these screens that they're both very close to the outside edge of that reservoir. So what I ended up doing after cleaning them one time is just cutting that extra PVC that I had between each one of the fittings and that tightened that up, moved those algae scrubbers a little farther away from the outside edge of that reservoir and a little closer to the center and now I don't really have that problem as much as I used to. If I do end up still having this problem, I can always go get the 90 degree elbows that go inside to outside, so it would tighten it up even more. Now when I initially built these algae scrubbers, one thing I thought I wasn't going to like is the fact that I had to completely remove the entire reservoir out in order to clean the screens instead of just lifting the screens out themselves. And I've actually come to like this about these algae scrubbers that I built because it enables me to clean out the reservoir of the algae scrubber as well when I do the cleanings in the sink instead of trying to clean them out underneath the aquarium stand where I'm limited on space. Now, do I drip a little water when taking these out? Yes, but I've kind of got it down to a science at this point. I shut my water flow going off to the one algae scrubber. I let it drain for about five minutes to get most of the water out of it. Then I go ahead and disconnect my water supply, just set it in my other algae scrubber, then disconnect my two drains and I have a plastic container that I put under the reservoir. Then I go ahead and pull the plastic container and my algae scrubber out at the same time so it catches any drips that are coming from those drains. Now when I do my cleanings, it usually takes me about 10 to 15 minutes to clean both of these out. And that includes removing them from underneath the aquarium stand, cleaning them up, and then go ahead and reinstalling them underneath the aquarium stand. So the time frame to clean these things and maintain them is really not a big deal. Now on this multiple systems all running off one sump filtration, I already had a algae scrubber that I made out of a 20 gallon long aquarium that has four screens in it. My biggest problem with that algae scrubber is I had to run the drains out the side of the aquarium and running those drains out of the side, I cannot flow near the amount of water that I can out of these ones that I'm using a bottom drain. That's just the law of physics. And because of that, I might just be removing that 20 gallon long algae scrubber that I built and putting in two more of these compact dual screens because of how much more productive they are than that 20 gallon long. Now, the main reason I built and added these two algae scrubbers is because my nitrites were climbing in the system. They were pushing almost 80 ppm. This right here was a test I did after cleaning the screens twice and I was down to about 60. And then this is a test that I did the day before I posted this video and I'm down around 40. So we're dropping pretty substantially and once again, this is no water changes or anything like that. It is just the addition of these two additional algae scrubbers. So before we finish up this video guys, there was one other thing I wasn't quite sure if I was gonna like about these algae scrubbers and it was the fact that I put two screens on each one of these pieces of PVC and whether that was gonna be annoying to clean but it's really not that bad. I just use a plastic scraper to scrape off the top screen then I lift that one up and hold it while scraping off the one underneath it. Then I flip that algae scrubber over and go through that same process on the other side. The other concern I had, was it gonna be a waste of time because was I not gonna get any growth on the inside of those screens because once the algae growth started on the outside, was it gonna block the light and not really do anything? 
But as you can see in this clip, I get about equal growth on all four sides of these two screens. So that just really isn't the case and I'm getting the double amount of growth for the same amount of space basically. So that is gonna wrap it up for this video guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and gave you some good information. I highly recommend using an algae scrubber. It has saved me an extreme amount of maintenance as far as water changes, which can get rather costly with a saltwater system. And I will never run a saltwater aquarium system without one even though it does create a couple headaches, but the headaches that it creates are far less than the headache of having to worry about nutrient levels in your aquarium system. Now, in my case, the biggest headache I have is that green hair algae growth in my main displays, and I've just got to figure out the right collection of fish to counteract that growth in my system. So I am an Amazon affiliate, and any of the links to the products that I use will be in the description. You can check those out if you want to go ahead and use them. If you did end up enjoying this video and it gave you some good information, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it. The whole concept of my channel is to give you guys the most information in the least amount of time as possible so I don't waste your time. And I hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.